Hey everyone, welcome to a Goody Reader review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. We have here something very special for you guys today. Yep. We're the first uh, e-reader news outlet to give you guys a sense on everything to do with the new Onyx Book Max Pro. It is has not only a Wacom screen now, but a touch screen as well. So you can interact with it with your fingers. And this has been one of the oft requested features that people have made since Onyx has been making large screen devices. Yes, it is still a sunken screen. They haven't gone to the point where it's a full flush screen and bezel on such a large device. This is the exact same shell carried over from the first generation. Nothing is different in that regard. The back shows a lot of fingerprints as you can see here because it is not textured. You do have a speaker on the back. This is just um, style here. This isn't a door for anything. We'll look at the stylus in a second. You do have your strap on the side. All the sides are clean. Top has nothing either. Everything happens on the bottom. So you have your um, uh, light indicator, your hard reset, your micro USB, your micro um, uh, HDMI, a 3.5 mil headphone jack power button, and then there's four buttons here. There's a back, a forward, a back in terms of navigation. Then there's a more button there. Let's take a look at the stylus now. So the stylus has moved from having a little lapel clip to being this kind of HB2 pencil looking thing. It is octagonal, so it's got eight sides to it. It's got a reverse but uh, erase button on the back and a nib up top for writing. It's super light, doesn't have any batteries, you don't need to charge it. Overall, the UI of this, like the, you know, now reading, rec recent ad, and library storage app settings and such. That's pretty consistent from the Max Carta, but there are some newer options and such at the top. So at the top, we'll just go left to right. You have home, back, battery, and Wi-Fi. If you click the bar, much like Android, you drop down various other things, Bluetooth and whatnot. The clock, if you click that, it actually refreshes the page, which is kind of cool because if you have some staining on the screen, you can get rid of that. This is a really interesting toggle. You'll toggle between the physical page turn buttons going left and right, or you can toggle for audio. This is A2 mode, so if you need something that is using a lot of processor, you can turn it to A2 mode. It lowers the quality of the images, but speeds up the device. This is much like on an Android device when you press the bottom button and it opens up multi-screens. That's really what this is, so you can toggle between that. That's super handy. Yeah, and then this is search settings and clear recent reading. All right, so, um. The main home screen here is pretty nice, again, because you have a touch screen now, you can gesture, you don't have to exclusively rely on the stylus, which is pretty awesome. These are the books that you're in the process of, like, reading, so, um, you know, it shows you how much, like, how far you are in the book, what page you're actually on, which is pretty useful. Uh, if you go to, like, the library setting here, um, you have different ways to, like, show it, gridded, list, uh, pretty you know, pretty basic. Library is pretty standardized, but there are some options here not found on any other e-reader. Of course, you got gridded and list view. What I found is very interesting is they actually have scan for metadata. So if you have side loaded eBooks that don't have uh, missing the cover art and things like that, you can actually click that. It'll scan all of the books in your library and put books, like change like the cover. Storage pretty well is your file explorer. If you click on application, it pretty well has like the apps. A lot of them are default apps, but this does have Google Play. Um, with Android 6.0, you do actually have a lot more versatility in the types of apps that you can download. Everything from like uh, uh, Evernote to like Google Keep and things like that. Uh, settings. Pretty well basic. There's like, you know, power manager, languages, text to speech languages, uh, extension, calibration for setting up like your stylus and stuff like that. Uh, Bluetooth options here to basically uh, pair up like a new device. 
So we're on the cover art of a book we've sideloaded, obviously, because this doesn't have its own story. You have to basically sideload everything. So we're just going to jump to a random chapter so we have a page of text. So from here, what you can do is turn pages with your finger, the stylus, swipe, tap, the physical page turn buttons. There's like four different ways to do that. You can long press on something. It takes a little bit of time, but once it does, it opens up a bunch of different text option so you can choose your dictionary right here it defaults to the Chinese one which doesn't make a lick of sense for an English speaker so we have to click the Oxford English dictionary in order to do that you can do things like highlights and you can long press to do annotations so you can do annotations with the keyboard if you tap in the center you do have your conventional font settings so you can change everything to very large very small you have Chinese font face English font face text style a lot of different ways to do line spacing and then there's code page so if you're dealing with a lot of international languages you have you have UTF-8 simplified Chinese etc all that really technical stuff also if you tap in the center you have some contrast controls as to how heavy you want the text to be and you can actually bold it as well everything changes live it's all very quick this thing's actually running really fast for a large screen e-reader. So you do have some additional settings here like status bar, screen settings. Um, we're not going to go through, through every single one of these, but you have stuff like show annotations, hyperlink, image dithering. Yeah, there, like, there's a lot to that. Much like the Sony e-reader, uh, the DPT RP1, this actually has a split screen view. One where you can have text on one side and you can actually take notes on the other. So if we find some text, you can actually long press on the text and get the same options you do get in an ebook, but that's not really what we're here for in a PDF. What we are here for is pressing this more button on the bottom and the ability to scribble something that you weren't able to do on an ebook you can actually scribble on here so you can make notes you can circle things you can point stuff out you can draw black teeth on people's faces you know make funny mustaches you have the full ability to do that so something where the onyx books lacks is that there is no pressure differences in the nib so you can press really hard or really light and the line remains the same erasing is very easy you just tap or swipe over what you've written you have to actually choose your level of thickness so we've chosen a very thick line um, every single time if you want to change it you will have to go back so you lose that feeling of it naturally being harder if you press so um, that's a little bit of a downfall, but it makes up for it with the very, very, very quick shape making, uh, grid changes. I mean, everything on this is so incredibly fast. And there's very few large screen devices on the market that appeals to musicians. This is one of them for a couple of reasons. You could write your own sheet music uh, with the sheet music app, but it having like a, a higher version of Bluetooth, you can hook up Bluetooth accessories right. like pedals and things like that. So the, the sheet music pages will turn automatically if you upload your own PDF files. So this is Audible and we're just going to click on a book. And we'll just give it a listen here, so we'll be nice and quiet. Of the thousands of cities conquered by the Mongols, history only mentions one that Genghis Khan deigned to enter. Usually, when victory became assured, he withdrew with his court to a distant and more pleasant camp. You know, we have the e-reader lying on its back, the single speaker is pressing down, but still the you can hear what they said, it's not like muffled or anything like that. Another great feature of this is that you can use it as a second monitor uh, for your laptop or any other HDMI device without any power cables or anything like that. This is the second screen, something like that, that's pretty cool. You can even go to websites like uh, Wikipedia, and um, if I can navigate over there, goodyreader.com, you can see right there. Um, it isn't the quickest experience, of course. It is e-ink and it isn't powered or anything like that. So it does heavily decrease the power consumption, uh, the battery life, sorry. It increases power consumption and decreases your battery life, but it is able to do it pretty well. I believe that it is the best 13.3 inch e-reader currently on the market. Uh, e-ink Carta goes a long way in making the whole entire experience, whether you're reading an e-book or a 
PDF. Uh, it has clarity and A2 mode is tremendously robust. Changing the volume options on the fly is really good. But primarily you're buying this for Android 6.0 for a wider array of apps, digital note taking, and e the ebook reading experience. We hope you enjoyed this video. For GoodyReader.com, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.